The last couple years have been a very unique time in history. I think if we could kind of encapsulate the last couple years into one word, it might be the word division. Right? I don't know that we've ever lived in a time that was so polarized in our culture, in our nation, and unfortunately, some of that has even bled into the church. And so we've had division over uh, political stances, We've had division over virus things, mask or no mask, vaccine or no vaccine, booster or no booster. It just seems like people have been at each other's throats. And sometimes we can kind of feel like this is a brand new thing, like we're the first generation that's really experienced it. But I'm comforted when I'm reminded that the, the world that Jesus lived in and spoke into and, and taught into and his disciples planted churches into uh, was a world very much like the one that we're in right now. There was a lot of division. And I'm really reminded of a, a passage, one of my favorite ones in Matthew chapter uh, 16, where Jesus asks his disciples this question, and I think it's a really good question for all of us to ask ourselves. Who do people say that I am? And his disciples answered, well, some people, Jesus, say that you're John the Baptist, come back to life. And some people say that you're one of the Old Testament prophets. And Jesus is like, no, 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 what, who, but who do you say? that I am. And Peter answers and he says, Jesus, we believe that you're the Christ, the Son of the living God. And then Jesus says some of the most remarkable words ever recorded in human history. And he says, Jesus says, on this rock, on this message, on this gospel message, I'm going to build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. And so for the last 2,000 years, that's what we've seen. We've seen the people of Jesus engaging the world around them, engaging the darkness around them in a very meaningful way. And so that's what we've seen God doing, even in the midst of all this chaos and all this division in the last couple years. And so I want you to just sit back, relax. This is 2021 in review. A few months ago, we had our first team member class since COVID. We had 33 new team members join our church family. We're getting ready to have another membership class in just a week or so. We're going to have another 30 new team members. So that's over 60 new team members. And that's a 20% increase in people that are coming alongside us, linking arms and joining our mission at New Life. And we couldn't be more excited about the future. Well, hey, New Life family, Nathan Bird here, Ryan Sisney here. Listen, we just want to say thank you so much for your prayers and your support. Y'all were faithful enough to go out on prayer and financially support us. And now we've got a facility here on almost four acres that this church now owns. And we've been baptizing people every month for, I think, the, what, the past five? Yeah, at least. Five, yeah. six months. Um, God's adding to our to our numbers and we're already looking to have to go to two services and so thank you for living out the New Testament thank you for your faithful giving uh, and your prayers because because of you and your prayers and your faithful giving there's now a, a gospel centered church in Hendersonville North Carolina that's trying their best to love God love others and make disciples your investment your time your prayers has literally allowed us to see new life happen here. It's unbelievable, the transformation. And it's not in people, it's not in seats, it's not even in baptisms. Those are great things, but here's the deal. We have watched people's lives be yeah. transformed and it's unbelievable. Thank you. Thank you for your prayers and thank you for your investment. It matters to the kingdom of God. Transformation Village is a transitional housing community for women and children. We have women that are here for various reasons, some that are fleeing domestic violence, some that are just out of prison, and others who are in active drug and alcohol recovery. At Transformation Village, we have grown from being able to support 50 individuals to now being able to support 100 individuals. We are transitional housing, so we are facilitating individuals who have fallen on hard times, either through homelessness, or if they've just come out of prison, we are their transition uh, back into society. 
Uh, we do have case managers, we have peer support, and we have volunteers who teach classes to help them. At Transformation Village, we are very appreciative of the consistent support that we have received from New Life Community Church. From our move back in the spring, to meal service once a month, monthly birthday parties, child enrichment assistance, and more. Thank you so much for all that you do. Why do I like serving? Because um, I feel God's called me to serve and uh, to bring joy to other people. Um, and I do that, I'm serving God. I'm not serving the people. I'm, uh, through serving the people, I'm serving God. And that gives me um, joy serving Him. Uh, he's made me to, to do this. MAPS has expanded in many different ways as far as the number of clients that we have seen. There have been a lot more young women, families approaching us because of, I think, some of the uh, issues of the day. Uh, we've seen more and also because word has gotten out that uh, of the services that we do. So I think the word for MAPS for 2021 is probably expansion, which is um, something very exciting and it brings us into 2022 and how we're excited about doing even more. My name is Caleb Brancho. I'm the volunteer administrator for Asheville Buncombe Community Christian Ministries. And in 2021, we saw a lot of changes in our community and in our ministry. Now we have the opportunity to take this facility that is, was once empty and now fulfill another need in our community with Costello House. The Costello House has uh, opened up in 2021 as a cold purple shelter. And a cold purple shelter simply means when it's 32 degrees or below, um, we open up our doors and people can come in seeking shelter from the cold. The biggest thing that we're proud of with the Costello House is that there wasn't anywhere for single men to seek shelter on those cold nights. So as our volunteers come in and they help uh, check in over here and they greet people and they talk to them about where their needs are for that evening, when they're ready to go, then they're coming out here to go to the room, but we also have volunteers that help them carry their stuff in there and help talk with them and find out more things about them and build relationships with these people. So ABCCM as a whole is oftentimes trying to find ways to stop people from falling through the gaps. And right now, homeless men in Asheville, North Carolina and freezing temperatures, this is a, a gap. Because without our church members, without our volunteers at our other churches, we couldn't accomplish as much as we can do now. Hi, I'm Demetria, the Executive Director of Life 107. Life 107 is a local nonprofit working to eliminate trafficking and exploitation and empower survivors to an abundant life. Last year, in 2021, we were able to educate more than 800 community members and school staff on the detriments of porn use, the, um, the signs of trafficking, and what sexual exploitation looks like. We also began our street outreach initiative to give vulnerable people a platform for stability. And lastly, our most exciting point is that we were able to come alongside survivors of trafficking through mentorship. Thank you, New Life, for giving us the opportunity to come alongside survivors and affect and protect the youth of Western North Carolina. We don't do this without you. I work with Youth of the Mission here in Asheville and we focus on ministering to the travelers, to those who have been trafficked, and we raise up young people to be trained into missions. I also minister alongside with Life 107, and over the years, we as YWAM and the Reishma Project have had lots of connections with this ministry. And I love that Life 107 really focuses on walking alongside these ladies' journeys, hand in hand with commitment and consistency. Thank you so much, New Life, for being a part of what the Reishma Project and YWAM is doing here in Asheville and around the world. Lifelines uses both the indoors and the outdoors to offer intentional, hands-on experiences to bring gospel truth to life. And so we pair learning activities with spiritual truths and principles, and it really creates like a window into somebody's soul that really opens the door to have spiritual conversations. So you may have somebody that would never step foot in a Bible study, but they would come on a hike or a camping trip or a climbing trip or things that we do in the indoors too for people that don't like nature so much. But it really creates a hands-on experience where they get to actually experience the gospel. 
So one thing that really excites me about Lifelines is just seeing the way that it has impacted me personally and impacted our team, both in our relationships with each other and our walk with the Lord. And so we're really excited to share this way of learning and experiencing the Lord with others. Hello, Coastway friends, family, and financial partners. First of all, I want to say thank you. Thank you for partnering with us relationally, spiritually, and financially to move the mission forward through Coastway Church in Myrtle Beach. You know, vision comes from God, but it usually moves at the pace of surrender, the pace of His people, the pace of generosity. And thanks to your generosity, we are seeing the vision that God has given us to multiply the gospel through the Grand Strand and to the entire world become a reality. We are sending greetings from Yangoi Brno. It's me again, Petra and Barcha. And we would like to say and share with you how God was blessing us last year. We started a new wildlife ministry for younger kids. And God gave us amazing club room for them in the part of Brno, uh, Lesna and the second club room uh, for older kids and also the storage. So we are uh, really blessed that we have so many uh, good places to to meet. And after this summer, uh, three new volunteer leaders joined our team, which is also a huge blessing uh, because now we have more people to, you know, build the ministry with, uh, be here to build relationships with the kids. We have uh, students, that are a little bit older, um, who are Christians now, and we are also starting this junior program for them to invest in this uh, particular group more. Thank you for your prayers and that you are in this uh, with us. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. Hey, New Life, it's Will Kendall. I'm here with Daniel Fine and John Barrier. Uh, just got back from a mission trip to the Tampa area, uh, with CWE, construction for worldwide evangelism. We built a church for the Haitians down there and incredibly impactful. I got invited to go on this mission trip with Will and uh, I have had loss this year and uh, some health issues and uh, was able to make it work and be able to go and um, I went there to help out and towards the end of the trip I just got so much more out of it than I was expecting and it really has altered, changed my life. Um, I encourage anyone, everyone to go, no matter what age. Uh, um, It's just super impactful and you don't expect to be changed from something like this. And it really just changed my life. Greetings to you from Antalya Evangelical Church in Turkey. We had 600 new people came, non-believers, and they are Muslim background people that we share the gospel message with them. And also we gave them the New Testament as a gift. Finally, we are getting closer to our uh, third vision, which is we will start a new church location in the west of Antalya. And we are very excited as a church about it. And thank you so much for your prayer and for your support. God bless you. Hello, this is Rafiq Abu Khalil, the director of Arab World Media and Ministry of Pioneers. Without the partnership we have with New Life Community Church, we cannot do this. You are very, very strategic partner with us, making the gospel accessible to a lot of Muslims in the Arab world. Today I came to say a big thank you to every member in the church. You know, it is so important to us uh, as a missionary couple that we know that this supporting and sending church, New Life Community Church, is behind us in every way. Uh, And we need that we need that kind of support this whole congregation really has enveloped us uh, in the 20 years plus that we've been here and so we feel very very loved and safe and secure and healthy here and thank you uh, rodney and new life community church for that yes thank you so much one of our seven big dreams is to engage an unreached people group and through our partners last year in north africa We've seen 260 people from Muslim backgrounds come to faith in Christ through their media outreach. 
They've trained 27 new uh, Arab missionaries who started 33 new house churches in 2021. We're just blown away by God's work all across the world. Another one of our seven big dreams was to invest $1.5 million into missions, church planting, poverty alleviation, and anti-trafficking initiatives. And thanks to your generosity, after only three years together, we've already invested over $1 million into those efforts, and we are well on our way to accomplishing that big dream. New Life Church family, thank you so much for being the hands and feet of Jesus over the course of this last year. This is why we exist, to help people find and follow Jesus. Let's make 2022 the best year yet.